east to the west, the, the heat, the, I don't know, it just transfers yeah. a lot of the heat there. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Something well, like that. I don't know. I, I'm not a scientist, so I can't quote that. Well, once you, that's, I mean, that's essentially how uh, a lot of our, uh, you know, tornadoes and stuff, it's, you know, from two different types of warm, uh, warring temperatures, and they combine, and then we have, you know, okay, we are all live on the pre-show now. So we are here with uh, our special guest, uh, Judy Serta, and our uh, co-host right here, Truth, <laughs> uh, and uh, Rock Rage Pro, uh, a.k.a. Alex. Saying it backwards AKA this time. AKA Rage Rockefeller in the building. Yeah. No matter what my name is, the truth is going to be Rage Rockefeller. Um, I don't know what... I, 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 I use that name online, though. Rage Rockefeller? I use it online for gaming. Dude, so people a, see the name and they're it's like... A good, it's a good name. <laughs> it's a good twist. Twist. Uh, <laughs> um, interesting nickname, you know, having Rock Rage or whatever. But it's just like it's just a core element from uh, some old gaming things that I... Wait, used. wait, wait. What, how did you even get that name? Rage Do you really Rock- want... Do it, dude. How did yeah. I get Rage Rockefeller? Yeah, How did two that? Minutes. What did I do with Rage Rockefeller? No, my name is just Rock Rage. Yeah, Rock Rage. Um, you want to know the real story? It's really silly. Why? My friends was coming up with like, okay, yeah, Alex, you, you're, you're playing games, you're video game stuff. Like, you need a, a gaming name, you know, because you know you're gonna be cool and they're like, like, what do you like? I'm like, well. Uh, at the time, you know, the, one of the biggest things, and still one of the biggest things, the is Pokemon. Oh, the, yeah. the rock. <laughs> no, no. So Pokemon, right? So I was like, all right, it's Pokemon. Like, what's your favorite Pokemon? I was like, all right, Onyx. It's a rock type Pokemon. All right, favorite rock. Pokemon's Onyx? Rock. Yeah, rock. And he's like, well, what's one of his attacks? Rage. Rage. There you go. Rage <laughs> plus 10 damage every turn. It's super It's super simple. You see, you knew the. <laughs> I <know that. laughs> yeah, I, I, I could not remember that for the life of me. And the Pokemon cards is only like 10 damage. Yeah, but that is one of the biggest things. Uh, Right now, it's like with a Pokemon Go. Do you remember that? The the Pokemon Go? Where no, all, I never all, really got into that. Yeah, but <laughs> it, oh, I'm glad people stopped doing it because there have been so many car accidents and people, you know, a lot of uh, deaths from it. So I was I was telling a lot of people, just don't do it anymore. Just, I just, died, you know. just, just go outside, look at the sun, you know, enjoy it. You, know, you still Why might get... Why do you want to look at the sun? You're going to burn your retina. Yeah, I pull a Donald Trump. <laughs> um, you still... <laughs> Well, you you look at the sky. That you know what I mean. Oh, okay. You can look. People look at the sun. Away from the sun, yes. Yes. We. If you lived a long life, you looked at the sun at least once. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah, just you know, just nature. You know, which you're just talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about the bloom. Do you think we need that again? Yeah. Plants, cool. Flowers, you know, like that's good. Uh, extra five likes on Instagram. Yeah. Well, no, no. I, that, I just remember my, my brother, he had bought a whole bunch of seeds for him and his daughter, and they're, like, planting seeds, you know, mm-hmm. so that's their big thing, right? They have a little garden, and I remember he went to the uh, the store to buy, like, oh, you know, let's go find some seeds, some, a variety of seeds, and all you can find was cilantro. So he mm-hmm. buys, like, a few cilantro. So now they just have nothing but a little trough of uh, cilantro. And he's like, my, my niece is like, yep, this is our garden. I'm like, what's in the garden? Cilantro. I'm like, what else? Na- what else, Naya? Cilantro. I'm like, all right, this is a great garden. But Moro's like, yeah, I'll get some more. I just, this is what we're, what is what we're doing right now, okay? This is what we're building. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a beautiful garden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, plants, you know, it's a cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Well, today we do have a special guest, Judy Serta, who is an actress. Um, do you prefer actress or actor? Because I know some I people. I prefer actress. I am an actress. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. No, because I remember that would, you know, I remember I talking with uh, a young actress and she was like, I'm an actor. And I'm like, oh. oh. So I was like, I just want to respect. Okay, yeah, you're an actor. That's actor-or. fine. Actress is just fine with me. However you identify. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, a f- it's a fun industry. Acting, yes. you know, being, you know, on like TV shows, uh, it movies. It is. Yeah, it, it is really great. It's a lot of hard work at the same time. But when you do land a part in something such as a good TV show or a good film, it's really exhilarating. And when you can really develop a good character and watch it and be impressed with yourself and your performance and be happy with how you did, it's really a great feeling. Well, I think that's one thing that a lot of people can agree with is when they see themselves, um, even if it, even if it's a bit part, they just see themselves up there. Um, one of my yes. favorite, one of my favorite movies was Bowfinger and at the end of that movie it's a silly movie but he pulled all these uh 
interesting like people together to make a movie and they weren't necessarily actors but they got to see themselves on the screen and they just you see their eyes like oh my god that was me and it might be like a little silly part but they're like you just see that the essence of acting and what what comes with it yeah it's exciting because you look bigger than life on the screen and it's surprising to see and you're thinking wow that's me because your your face is bigger everything is bigger on camera the camera adds yeah. 10 pounds <laughs> so it really shocks you at first and to see you, that you just first thing you got to do is like call up family friends hey check this out look at <laughs> <laughs> and they're, or they're like, oh, I saw you on that one movie, or yeah. I saw you on that TV show, that commercial. Uh, I've been in a commercial for uh, my city's college, and my teacher's like, just come down, just we'll do some shots. And uh, they had like a whole bunch of people that came down, but uh, apparently that the director just filmed a certain area, so I was in the commercial, mm -hmm. and I just remember like, wow, this is cool. No one's gonna see this though, like just because it's so local. But I was like, hey, it was cool. But even when I saw myself when the like YouTube ad pops up, I'm like, I'm watching myself, and it's like a, <laughs> like half a second. It's like there I was. My friend's like, where? Oh, I gotta rewind it. Hold You're on. Going wow, there <sighs> I was. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Which, which, for for what? It was a Pittsburgh. Uh, it was for Pittsburgh. Uh, the Lost Madonna's College uh, commercial. It was in the YouTube ad. Yeah. Okay, we need to put that on. Slap yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's just a little itty bitty bitty bitty. Oh my God! It was so. It was, you, you don't even see me. Even if you, if you have an itty bitty, I think that's enough for an IMDb, right? IMDb. No. It, no, it depends no. on the the project. It depends okay. on the professionalism of it. Did it play on TV or a movie theater? Was it in a big film festival? Because uh, credits oh! have to be yeah. Credits have to be submitted to the IMDb managers, and they have to be approved. Otherwise, they don't get on there. So not every little Bam! goes on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how do you well, say it? Truth and, and, and that eliminates. Well, coming from an actress. <laughs> Yeah, really, the uh, well, how, how do you say it? True, the the whole like bam or whatever when you're acknowledging someone that got a point. Remember, you used to say it back. In just the say day? no, so it'd be awkward Wait, for what? Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you just totally forgot about it. Exposed. You got exposed. Oh, you got exposed. Exposed. The truth was exposed. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but um, just getting back to that. Um, yeah, so when you are on even a small, or for IMDb, uh, that actually eliminates the process for anyone just applying and jumping on there, and they might do like little home movies and things like that, but this is the creme de la creme, or the people that are starting to jump into the acting world, IMDb, and Judy here with us has a plethora of work uh, on her IMDb. I saw, I saw, I saw. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, you just keep scrolling and scrolling, and be like, oh, wow, 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 wow. So we're going to jump into that once we get on the show. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, he'll be doing all the sound effects for us tonight. Sam, uh, you don't have to press oh. any of the buttons. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the gong show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 Gotta love the laughing. They're laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, thank you. And the Oscar goes to... <laughs> Is there a time I hear it clapping or that like that? <laughs> That would be nice, yes, but I think the greatest feeling comes from feeling like you did a good job in your film or your TV show. I've never really thought about winning awards, even though I've won a few local awards. I've never really thought about winning Oscars. To me, putting out a good movie, something with a good message or something really entertaining, that's a reward in itself. Yeah, later I'm going to ask you if you want to think about it. If you were to work with anybody, who would you want? Save it for the show, man. <laughs> Pre-show. Yeah, I'll give you the heads up. Before okay, okay. Okay. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. That's the one. You got to excuse Truthy. He's. I explode. Randomly. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he hasn't been on as a host for a while, so he's kind of rusty. <laughs> oh, speak, so, yeah, so you said kind we were talking rusty. about uh, voice actors earlier. We're doing voice acting um, behind the scenes, and Truth, you said you could do two. Right, you said you do yours, and I just wanted to, I just wanted to hear the other one that you were talking no, I was about. Like, I was like, hey, hey, like I mean, that's all, that's all I got. <laughs> okay, <laughs> See, you have the range. I don't have range. Well, in it, my, it's, voice. my me when what I learned uh, from voice acting or the things that came, I would just watch TV. I was like a big fan of like Kermit the Frog as a kid, and it just naturally, I was like, oh, that's great, that's great, that's oh, that's wonderful. And then my mom was like, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> You know, and then I would talk to my friends like that, and then... Uh, what happened to that voice, she's yeah, thinking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I used to watch a lot of... I, and I'm, I love movies and cinema, so I, I also love a lot of old movies. Um, so, yeah, she... Look, here, Tony, if you don't ain't got my money, I'm going to take you there, she... You know, like, like a lot of those old... Don't old 
Yeah. Oh. Or uh, Dick Tracy. Or okay, let's see. I'm Russian, and in Russia we're going to do this. Yes, <laughs> maybe so. Uh, okay, I will tell you about the uh, the pumpkin. We'll get the pumpkin. We'll take the pumpkin. You know, like little. See, inflections. he's so good. I'm telling you, he should start his own channel. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, he, might all kinds of up, voices. he might get picked up by some, you know, That's internet true. I need a, You I need, need truth. a manager. I need a manager. I need both of these two as my managers. Well, for the, well, the ex- well. Ex- it comes as a team. For the, right. New Year, for the, new me. For the experience <laughs> and for the mouth. I need, yes. I need my... <laughs> for new both. Year. Knew me well, 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 Rage Rockefeller. Well, that's that's why we're all here. You know, we we all have something to bring to the table, and I just bring silliness. That's <laughs> two minutes, two minutes, two minutes to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let me move this. Yeah, I'm just telling you, man. You should start your own YouTube channel. Do a little side project here and there. Just do voiceovers. You know what? Some I've been program. wanting to, but I don't know if you've had just this problem. Do like it. when I'm at the house, sometimes mm-hmm. I just don't get that that peace and quiet or silence because oh. we ha- we live. Uh, I live with like two cockatoos. The owners have two cockatoos, mm-hmm. so one of the cockatoos is like this big, and his name's Foster, and oh, he's like my best buddy. So every time I even if I sound loud or if I sound angry, he'll be he'll squawk. But it's more of a like, "Are you okay, squawk?" You know yeah. what's going on. Yeah, are you into okay? Your emotions. Yeah. yeah, and he he can talk. He can talk. If I say hi, Fosty, he'll say hi, Fosty. He'll he'll talk back. Are you okay, Rage? <laughs> Rockefeller. You sound like 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 uh, Dude. a deranged Scooby Doo. <laughs> Raggy. Yeah, Raggy. Where's a Scooby snack. One minute. Like Zoinks, dude. One minute. Your voice too. That's it, man. That's like a variation of my voice. It's like nothing special. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know, it's funny, though. I, people go, oh, you do all these voices, but I, my voice, every time I hear my own voice, I always think it's, like, nothing special. I always think it's just, like, oh, it just sounds casual. Sounds. You have a range, man. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't have a gift like that. Don't oh. waste your gift on uh, just you know, a slam show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> go beyond. But no. Not, but not no. just a slam show. Go beyond that. Yeah, but I, but I will say this. So like I said, there's, there, I usually. Hey, I, Judy, how should I take that? Really? <laughs> I think he meant it in a good way. I, he meant way. continue to do the slam show, but move on to other projects. Yeah. As well. It's just the way he worded it, right? Yeah. 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 Just it's a typical foreigner, it. always getting it wrong. Really? <laughs> Foreigners, huh? <laughs> All right. Oh. Ten seconds. All right, ten seconds. All right. So, Rage Rockefeller, I'm expecting some hilarious voice acting. Oh. This thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll sprinkle it here and there. Do we see that thing? What's up? I'm Sam Maxson, a.k.a. Slam and Sam. I'm a DJ, actor, philanthropist, self-proclaimed renaissance man. When I'm not in the studio, I'm diving into my hobbies and exploring many interests. With that comes my personal uncensored insights on anything and everything. Are you ready for it? This is The Slam Show. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rock Rage from uh, The Slam Show. And I'm here with uh, my co-host, Truth. Truth, say what's up. Hey, what's up, everybody? Truth is Gara. You know what it is. And our special guest for tonight's show, uh, actress uh, Judy Serta. Hi. (laughs) I, you know what? I was going to clap, but I was going to, I almost hit this. I'm, I'm so tall. I, I, can, I have to move my hands yeah. here. There we go. Yes. So before we start, uh, you know, questioning our special guests and just jumping into things, uh, I want to talk about everyone's uh, past weekend. So uh, Truth, uh, hit us with uh, what you did on the weekend. Oh, the weekend, uh, just just work this weekend. I was covering um, Imagine Talks. It's like kind of like a Ted Ed kind of talk where a bunch of like, inspirational figures were able to talk about their story and maybe inspire others. Um, my friend, Trisha Bantigue, um, she was uh, one of the speakers there. She was talking about like self-empowerment. And uh, my friend, Sam, uh, she was talking about how, you know, she was a culinary dropout and how she was able to, you know, bounce back and, you know, have a good career after that. It's just, you know, it's like a bunch of inspirational speakers. Um, that, that was just the event I covered this week. But, Overall, you know, it was a pretty good weekend. Uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. A yeah. lot of good people. Well, that's interesting. I like uh, that you're bringing up, like, the TED Talk. So it was kind of like a seminar, es- yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was run by the um, Miss, Miss uh, Asian Global pageant. A lot of their pageant queens were there. Wow. And, yeah. 
It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm a, they, they always invite me to a lot of their events, and my friend Trisha, like, Truth, you better go. So, and you went, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'll jump right into uh, Judy. Well, how was your weekend? It was great. Movies Friday night, dancing Saturday night. What movie? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> It was um, something about, I don't even remember the exact name of it, but it was something about a phantom love, a very old, a type of period piece about um, some people in the 19, I think, 20s was the era about a dressmaker. Oh, the dressmaker. Yes, yes. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think it was called Phantom I've Love, seen, something like that. Is it like in the theater? Or? Yes, in theaters. Yes, it is in theaters. Whoa. Okay. It won a lot of awards. Was it good? Yeah, it was very good. Very interesting. A very unusual movie. It wasn't predictable like so many of them are about a dressmaker and his relationships and how he deals with going from being just a business type of dressmaker to a real person and allowing himself to have feelings. And that he achieved that in a very unorthodox way. Well, yeah, he they, in the commercial, they, they one of the, the ladies was like, uh, you have all these women around you. Why don't you have someone with you? And it just he just stands there and kind of smiles and it just cuts to another thing. I was like, Oh, so that might be like a, a good kind of topic to, to question or for a film. Cause I don't know that it, I haven't seen it, but it looked, the trailer sold me on it. Yeah. So, so you went dancing. Yeah. I went dancing Saturday night and then Sunday shopping. So it was a pretty relaxing, fun weekend, not a weekend where I worked. Oh, okay. So <laughs> shopping is always a win. Yes. Yes, it is. When you <laughs> find what you want. Yes, it is. Well, everyone sounds like they're at an eventful or at least, you know, a very moving uh, weekend. What about uh, you, man? What I'm, I'm to you? getting to mine. I'm just building up yours because mine's wasn't that <laughs> exciting. <laughs> What so, did you do then? So, well, I went to work. That's one thing. But I, I went to, I helped out with the BACT, uh, the Bay Area Children's Theater. I always help out with them when I can. Um, I had a chance to meet with uh, another uh, driver, this guy named John. Really cool guy, and he works for a special effects company. And he was talking to me about, um, like, his jobs and the things that he was doing. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And, and then he, we talked and conversed, and he's like, hey, we, I got to get you on some uh, some projects. I'm like, that'd be kind of fun. Because we were talking about, um, you know, voicing and, and stuff like that. But I'm I'm always around photography, videography, camera stuff. So any any time there's anything like that, I kind of jump on board. After that, I just went to my sister's house. Uh, she was out of town, unfortunately. She went on a cruise, and I was like, "Oh, the one time I come over, you're on a cruise." <laughs> um, funny thing, my niece decides to cut her own hair, and I don't mean cut hair like, "Oh, I'm going to trim it. I'm going to do something." She decides just to. <laughs> Really? Yes. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> this is my good. family. This is my family. They're, they're very animated. And so I, your this is my face when she does it. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So she has your haircut now. Yes. Is what you're saying. Yes. Essentially, she stood right next to me. Look, uncle. And then she's just like, I was just like, oh, great. Did you tell your mom? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's not happy. And she's probably going to see this and be like, <laughs> yeah, that's, she's not happy at all. So that, that was interesting. Um, I, I know I put my niece on the spot, but uh, when you do decisions like that, you just kind of have to talk about it. It's kind of out there. Um, How but, old is she? Huh? Oh, she's like six, seventeen. So teenagers. Yes. What can you do about that? Yeah. Um, well, she's got a good job, so I, I, she can get away with a few things. <laughs> well, let's jump. Uh, that was our weekends, um, and. <laughs> Anyway, so that was a weekend's, and that's good because it's always good to be active and doing something. And you know, um, like I said, I, I didn't do too much. I just kind of kept it simple. But you did a lot. You were helping out children, man. Uh, You're the yeah. real MVP. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Rage Rockefeller always does good. He's so humbled. So yeah, when you when you call me out and humble, that's when I trip up on the words. But <laughs> we're gonna jump right into our special guest, Judy Serta. Now you are an actress, and yes. how long have you been acting? Well, I've been acting since I was a little girl. I started off doing plays and musical okay. theater, so I did a lot of that. Then I got more into dancing, took a little bit of a break from acting, mostly doing dancing as a teenager, then back into singing in musicals and doing more dancing. And then when I hit my 20s, I started getting more serious about acting, but it was still, again, a lot of theater, but then doing occasional independent films here and there. Okay. But I would say the last 10 years, I've really been pursuing it seriously. Okay. Well, he that's one thing. I, I my background's in theater and the mm -hmm. arts, and there's a lot of pretentious people. You just walk around and act. You know, it's I think it's it's a it's a fun environment. But yeah. you meet some interesting people. Um, just tell me during those times of the theater, um, was it hectic? Just um, or what did you did you find like a really good group to kind of bond and explore your talents? I worked with a lot of different groups, so I was always with different theater companies. It was pretty hectic because I was also working full time at the time 
And when I was a teenager, I was, of course, going to school as yeah. well as doing theater at night. So rehearsals took place every night, then performances weekends. So I pretty much had a busy schedule then, but I did enjoy it. I loved doing the musicals, learning the dance routines and the songs for the shows was always great. And I loved playing lead roles such as B.B. in A Chorus Line oh, okay. and Marty in Grease. So those were my <laughs> favorite musicals that I ever did. Oh, musicals. I really remember those fondly. Yeah. Oh, musicals are always fun. Um I'll, I'll do I'll do a, a real quick voice because we're doing it by voice. I'll do one okay. from a musical, and I'll see who gets. Let's this. go, Rage. All right, let's go ready? hear it. How did do I see you've met my faithful hand in hand? See, they're just a little brought down because when you knocked, they thought you were the candy man. That's Tim Curry, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. <laughs> I never did see. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, but when you're in the the arts and your theater, there's so many. I just I just love I love musicals. So there's uh -huh. like uh, there's a whole bunch of them that I, I watched and and I held behind the scenes on like some little project from college. Um, and it's when you can dance, you just bring actually a whole world dance. to to stage because yes. you can like oh you can sing that's great can you dance eh. so but when you can do both it's very daunting and hard especially when you have to go I have to learn my lines. And have to remember the choreography, and just talk about that. Just how, yes. you, like, just during college, and then you went to like how 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 hard is dancing? Because you're still doing it today. Yes, it's yes, a... I still dance today. I dance in musicals and promo videos. Yeah, what, kind and... of, what, what kind of dance? Uh, well, mostly modern dancing, as far as the music videos go. Yeah, just regular club dancing for the music videos okay. mixed with some jazz dancing. I'm trained in jazz, tap, and ballet. Okay. Plus, I took modern and funk classes in the past. Ooh, funk. Uh, yeah, Whoa, yeah, it was funk. fun. It's, it's good to have a variety of different dances. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I danced uh, the modern dances in the music videos, but when I was performing on stage, it was, it was of course, jazz dancing, tap dancing, okay. some ballet. So I loved doing all of it. Yeah, and when I was doing it, there were a lot of rehearsals involved, which was great because the more you practice, the better you get. You, you get. And that's very important to do that, to go home and practice what you've learned yes. after a class. Because it will show. It will show. And if you have a, a teacher that's always, like, uh, on your back about, you know, pushing you to your, your full extent, um, they're definitely going to say, hey, practice is perfect. You're going to have yes. to – you're going to have to – and I, I never really acted, never in my life, but I took acting, like, 101. You took and I took a class. So – I was. I just remember. All right, here's your lines. It's two pages. I freaked out. I panicked. <laughs> I got scared. But here's the thing that actually made me uh, make me <laughs> silly. Stuff. What made me actually get through it was my partner because we. It was a dual role, it was a male and a female. And my uh, my my classmate. She had so much confidence in me to do it. I just my brain remembered all the words, you know. And it's one of those things when you have a good environment and people around to make that um, teamwork makes the dream oh, work. it's so true yes. it's so true and people it's very underrated especially on a project in theater because it's a miracle just to get even any play or stage uh, done now you transition into acting um, essentially from theater that's what you do you mm -hmm. act on stage but usually with people when they're done with theater they're like okay I want to I want to do TV shows I want to do commercials I want to do my own projects right. I want to do my exactly. you know before you jump to that the first things that they talk about is uh, agents. Is like the first, like get an agent, um, essentially. But we'll, we'll jump into how you how you jumped into that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, uh, well, yeah, just jump into the agents. Like like you necessarily when you first started, was that okay. like a, a must? Well, before you get an agent, you really need to get some experience yes. or an agent is not going to take you on. Yeah. So I would suggest doing student films, auditioning for those, taking acting classes so you can get parts in those, doing independent films, auditioning for local commercials, all of that stuff. Then when you have a good resume, then you can present yourself to an agent, get a good headshot get and headshot, submit to yeah. them. And of course, nowadays, they also want to see full length photos. They want to see theatrical shots, commercial shots. They want to see a whole variety of pictures of you. So you can do a lot of self-submitting. That's possible on casting sites on the Internet, and that's very important. You shouldn't sit around and wait for somebody to call you and have a role for you. You yeah. should be out there every day, <laughs> every day trying to get work yourself, and then you can present yourself to agents and have both, self-submit and have an agent. Well, that's, you heard that. You heard yeah, that's yeah. Every day. You have to do it. Yes, if every you're serious. If you're hungry, if you're serious <laughs> you enough. Go if you're serious, every yes. Day. That's, that's a lot of people believe. That hey, I'm just gonna sit back. And oh not yeah, do no, well, exactly. It, it's it's easier That's because right they're here. they're yeah. No, <laughs> you're, you're hustling. Um, you're essentially making every day count. 
Yeah. And that's and when you see go getters and the people that people look up to, it's like, oh, guess what they were doing every day. They wake up, yes. they're on the phone, and they're not on their phone chit chatting. They're on their phone doing business, or right. if it's family, hey, I gotta call you back. And then yep. when you don't see them, that's when they make those calls. It's getting on the computer every day to check Social so many game. different sites, sending out pictures, videos, resume, looking and, at all the sites. Well, and I want to talk about this real quick: your headshots, mm -hmm. um, because. One of the things in, in college I learned when you take, uh, can you hold this uh, to the camera? When you take headshots for, uh, for any company or they want to do headshots, it's not like you just take a photo and be like, all right, this is me. Like, mm -hmm. I just did, no, it takes a whole, it takes actually sometimes they say over like 20, 30 shots um, to get what brings out. The headshot essentially is what builds, like what you bring to the table, but it also expresses yourself. It should show your personality. And it's and it's very hard. I remember I was with someone and I tried to do a headshot for someone and I just couldn't get it right. And then I met another photographer. It's like, no, this is what you have to do. And I learned from him how like what it takes. And I was like, you know, like I was a young guy. I was like, I, I don't understand this. But the more I've actually, you know, got more into projects and videos, I was like, this is very daunting. I didn't know you know how important a headshot is. Mm -hmm. Like what you even on just one shot, the person's gonna go, I need someone for my movie. Dun -dun. No, no. Exactly. <laughs> that one right there. And then they bring you in they, and you have to sell yourself essentially. You have to sit there and say, hey, my name is blah, 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 and this is what I can do for you and your show or your movie. And you, you have to bring that and you have to show that to them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you got to have a photo that shows them that. But now it's not just photos. you got to have your video and your content to provide. Exactly. You just let it all out, Rage Rockefeller. <laughs> well, Ultimate the... insider to the game. <laughs> Rage Rockefeller. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's um, essentially um, in theater and arts. These are like some of the things you learn, just kind of some of the things you learn in the background. These aren't things that I'm just like, oh, yeah, I just know. It's like, no, I, I took a long time for me to learn this. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't an actor, but I saw actors. I saw them on stage all the time. I would load in shows and go, oh, my God, this is incredible how they go over their lines over and they remember it every night and they bring it, bring it, bring it. And it's really incredible. And I implore many people to not only... Uh, to go see the beat, like watch movies and things like, but go to the theater, see see it live, see it in your face, um, and you'll see a lot of upcoming people that have a passion for it, and a lot of people that you look up to. Oh, I love Patrick Stewart. His whole background is theater arts. You know him, and I mean, there's so many other names. I just picked him out of the hat, but he's a very talented. Uh, you know, like in his voice too. You can just tell when he would talk, Patrick Stewart. Oh, that's a very theatrical sounding voice. Yeah, it sounds like he's talking from a play. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, from from college to uh, oh, it was actually high school. Oh, right? high school. Sorry. Yeah, high oh, school. I was uh, doing the musicals. Yeah. Yeah. So high from high school because even from uh, high school to uh, acting or getting into how did that transition? Well, I took acting classes for several years. I lived in Hollywood for a while and took oh, some wow. acting classes there. And then I took from a very good instructor in the Bay Area for six years. So while I was doing that, I would audition for films occasionally. And then I started getting in some of them. And pretty soon it increased. And I knew with each film I did that this was exactly what I wanted to do with my life. There was never so a doubt cool. about it. So, cool. so now so I just keep busy with all of them. I submit for the big movies as well as the independent ones. I do as much as I can. And I love commercials too i do a lot of those as well as okay, industrials yeah. and training videos all of it adds a up. wide variety and yes. like i said your indb and has doing uh, slam shows yes, <laughs> yes. exactly <laughs> well and uh, real quick talk about the auditions like like of course jumping into auditions is it fun for you to, like jumping in because i know um you have no matter what you have to keep going every time and if it doesn't work out you got to keep going you got to keep going right. That's right. It's enjoyable because I like reading for different characters. If it's a role I can really resonate with, I'll study it and go to the audition. Or nowadays, a lot of them ask for self-taped auditions. Oh, wow. Where you, yeah, where you have them filmed with your cell phone right at home, <laughs> which is good because I live in the Bay Area and then I can send self-taped auditions well, to L.A. Too. Yes, it saves plane flights, too. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of it is self-taped auditions. It doesn't have the same feel as it does when you're in person reading with another actor and in front of the director. Yeah. But either way, you just have to put your all into it and study the role, read it over several times before you actually tape it or before you go to the audition to do it. And you just do the best you can. You just have to make strong choices. That's important. You can't say, I'm not sure if the character is this way or that way, so therefore I'm going to do it a little this way, a little that way. No, you've got to make a strong choice and decide how you see the character. If the director wants it read differently but likes your talent, they'll direct you right at the audition and tell you, can you be a little bit mean? 
demeanor, a little bit nice or a little bit more scared in well, the scene. Well, essentially, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you do a character, say, for a, a play, mm-hmm. um, like everyone's done Romeo and Juliet, right? But each individual person that plays those roles brings something different. It's mm-hmm. going to be the same words, but they're going to bring something else in the next person. Right. So essentially, that's what it is when you apply. Yeah, they see the character a little differently, and sometimes it's going to be exactly what the director wants. Other times, it's not going to be, and hopefully, the, if they'll like your talent and direct yeah. you right then and there and tell you <laughs> if you're not reading it the way they see want it. it. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're practicing at home, you just have to say, "This is the way I see it," you know, or do a couple of takes and decide which way you like it better. Well, let's jump into some of your uh, key movies that you that you. That that you're a part of and the things that well films because it's not only just films but tv shows i mm-hmm. mean commercials music videos like you have a range just talk about some of the films though um that that you're starring in well i am starring in a movie called saint and cemetery it's a horror <laughs> movie my favorite genre Ooh. and that is being edited right now i have a couple of trailers of it on youtube that one is coming out as well as another feature film called Taking Liberty where I'm playing this role of Jennifer Curva who's a flirty type of character making accusations about (laughs) somebody and it's a a little comical the accusation she makes. I have a scene from that on YouTube. You know I think Sam Sam yeah, <laughs> I think Sam showed me the the link to that, and I saw oh, okay. yeah where, where you're where you're where you're you know in front of the camera, and they're like, well, what did he do? like? How did he you know treat you? Well, he treat me like this, and you just go, I'm not going to spoil it, but it, yeah. <laughs> it's it's very funny. Um, that's great. That's great that you're working on uh, Liberty and uh, Taking Liberty. Yes. yes, that is being edited and are those, has those distribution. Are, those, are, those are movies, or are they movies? Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Would you would you prefer working? In a movie or the TV, a TV series? If you had a choice. I would choose a TV series. Why, why? I mean, I love both. I love doing different movies, but a TV series is regular work. It's mm-hmm. also a regular character, so you grow with the character. You oh. learn different things about it, and I think the better you, pl- the longer you play a character, the better you will do playing that role. If you're on a, let's say, a TV series for six months doing many yeah. different episodes, you get better and better in that certain character as time goes oh, on. That's like, yeah, that's plus good. it is definitely regular work, which is something every actor or actress <laughs> wants. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely would love a role on a regular TV series. Has, has there been a TV series that has been like very... Influential in your acting career. I was just about to jump into that. Oh, <laughs> I love the shows like Law and Order, That's the Ion okay. TV shows, um, okay. Criminal Minds. There's several on there. A lot oh, my of the mom loves that. Yeah, a lot of the crime <laughs> drama series and medical shows are very awesome. good. They have the same characters on there every week, but then they have different characters come in to guest star. Mm. So they'll have the same police or detectives on every week who are really good, but then they'll bring in different people to play different scenes. And I just think a show like that would be really interesting to play. That's something you could never become you bored with. Hop into that. I would love to be on <laughs> one of those. Yeah. Wait, you heard that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Judy wants in. <laughs> Well, let's jump more into that. What are some of the influential uh, movies, maybe theaters, uh, that you grew up with that you always go back and to? And actors and actresses. Well, also that, but also even a guilty pleasures because everyone has like a movie that they go to, like, oh, that's that, you know, that's like that's a really silly movie, but you know what? I love it because it uh, it connects with me in a certain way. Yeah. yeah, well, like I said, I love the horror genre, so I would have to say the Friday the 13th oh, movies wow, yeah. are Ooh, very good. Slashers. I Know What You Did Last Summer, which had <laughs> several sequels. I really love those. Yeah, those are always interesting to watch, and as soon as I'm going to see a movie right away, I'm looking to see what horror movies movie are see. playing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. They, they're, they definitely, when you see them like on the theater and they're a really good horror movie. I just, I just go, Oh man, I, I'll, I'll watch this when I'm home. You know, I just like, I'm, I'm getting older now. Like, like the cameras are getting better. And <laughs> sometimes it's really difficult to, to see the, like, like hardcore uh, violence on, on anything, <laughs> but it's an enjoyable medium. I like psychological thrillers. Yeah, some, you know? Yes. There's a lot of, a lot too. of the horror, like, like, I don't, I want to, I want to know your opinion on this, Judy, but like, if you, how do you feel about the horror genre right now? Because if you look at the movies now, there are, there are a lot of them are more psychological, and you know compared to the uh, back then, there's a lot of slashes like Friday the Thirteenth, mm-hmm. Halloween, Freddy Krueger. Like, yeah, they Elm have Street. a lot of yes. like, think, now it's Freddy more like yes. you know popular. like a lot of thinking ones. Yeah, a lot like, of psychological ones. How do you feel about ones? the genre today? I think those are really good. I like that because then there's more thought put into okay. it. 
it, it's not very predictable. You may think the movie's going in one direction when it turns out to be going in well, another she was direction. The killer. Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. So I think that's a good idea to do it that way because it makes you think, and then oh. you takes you out of your own world, which is why you go to the movies so yeah, you can get cool. out of your own world and live in a little fantasy world. Well, for that, a that's why everyone Expands loves the yeah. genre. Yeah, yeah. She, likes, yes. she likes the change or the. The progression in the horror genre, okay? Yes, sci-fi is good too. I do a sci lot of sci-fi yes. movies. Oh, there's uh, definitely a big sci-fi fans here. Oh, there, yeah. There's one right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, yes, yes. But also, I mean, there's comic movies and stuff like that. But yes, one of the biggest things is sci-fi. Sci-fi has always been a a big genre, especially for like films like major, like just a lot. There's like so many that you can just throw on the table. Can I, but can, can I? Can I? Can I, can I can't, sorry, I have to jump in. Just a quick opinion. Last Jedi, good or bad? What's your opinion on that? That one I actually did not see. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know. Yeah, your no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and there's a lot of controversy with that film, <laughs> but I haven't seen it either. So. Yeah, don't give me that look. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> like Sam, Sam and. Uh, Truth is the only one that's seen this. Okay, we're gonna we have to talk later. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the corner by yourselves, and no one's yes, talking. Yes, yes, right. no we'll spoilers. Have to talk okay, about well, it. let's. What is some of your favorite films then? Me, uh, for me, uh, one of the films that like that really changed me, or really changed the way I just changed life was uh, Godfather, Godfather one and two. Um, and just my own thing, it, like it just it 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 teaches you how to, how to be like a head of a family. And how to not just a head of a family, but like a head of like either you're in a group or how to you know just to take care, just how to and kill people. No. Not, not, <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm like, just joking. You know, I don't, it, it just it teaches you how to be a leader. It well, teaches that's you how to be like. The, the well, head that's of a that's house. that's the beauty. That's the beauty that's of movies. Like. You can watch uh, a movie that people might say, "Oh, this film is you know this," but you can gravitate and grab something from that movie yeah. and then, you know, invoke it into your own life. Not so. that I'm killing people, Rage. Uh, no, of Let's course. I, not. No, no. I love, there's a lot of horror movies uh, yeah. in, you know, movies that people go, oh my God, you know, but we don't like that in real life, but we like a yeah. film to kind of, yeah. Right, we definitely yeah. don't want it in real life. No, no. <laughs> if we do, there's a problem. There's a problem if, like, you know, Jason comes around, you know, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, we don't want him to become real. Um... <laughs> Um, one of my favorite films, it's an, it's an older film, um, it's 12 Angry Men. Oh, I love that movie. I love that movie. It's, it's one of my favorite movie. movies. The, ju um, the jury, right? The jury, for, it was one kid. The old one, right? Or the new The one? older one, the yes. One. Yeah, yes, the, the black one. and white. I love it because you have these, these basically all these men against one guy who's like, wait a second, maybe this kid didn't do it, you know? And he, one man stood against the possibility of maybe this guy didn't do it. Let's actually go down the methods and talk about it instead of just saying, oh, he's just guilty. Yeah. And then he changes everyone's mind because they find reasonable doubt. Yeah. And that was like one of the most powerful uh, things that I saw in film. Yeah, that taught me and, the word reasonable doubt. Yes. I, well, <laughs> well, the acting's great. And one of the best, because the whole film is essentially in a courtroom. You're inside the little room where they have to delegate. And then they're just going back and forth. It is no action here or there. No, it's all verbal. And it's all powerful lines. And I was like, I love that acting, where it's all method and strong. And um, But don't get me wrong. There's a lot of other great movies. Bowfinger. It's a silly movie. It's an Eddie Murphy movie. It's a silly movie, but oh, it's about funny. films. It's that movie Bowfinger's about the the joy. And I encourage everyone to go see that and you too because it's it shows the joy of making the film. Because at the end of the film, you're watching like a little short clip of the film with the actors, and the, you see their reactions to like some silly parts of them acting. They're just like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this happened!" And it's like it it takes a team and it takes. God knows a budget, you know, it takes a whole everything to make that uh, real realization. So bringing that up, uh, Judy, when you're on these sets and you see all this and you're behind the lights and all this, does that still get to you? Or do you just like, you know, I've been here before. I'm going to act it and kill. I'm going to nail it. Oh, first try. Yeah. Easy work. It, it still excites me. I'm still always excited to be on set when I see the camera set yes. up, the crew working, because it's always a new part and it's something different. Although I have done some recurring roles, which I'm happy to okay. do. I did a sci-fi movie recently called Vile Strength and it was a sequel to Vile Speed and okay. in both movies I played this character of Liz who has these special powers and she's out to control the world and wants to get these powers from somebody else that is 
in a vial. Oh, wow. So she's looking for that vial and has people working for her to help <laughs> that's, her. Uh, that's, that's intense yeah. right there. <laughs> so th that was really oh my a great movie. And yeah, the first one is out, and you can find that on my YouTube channel, Vile Speed. But the second one, Vile Strength, should be coming out this year. Okay. So yeah. I was excited yeah. to resume the role. Well, Speed and strength, and then which, what's left? Stamina? Vile Stamina? Vile strength. Well, after that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. an idea, isn't it? If we do a third one. Yeah. If we do a third sequel, yes. Well, that's good, especially if like you have that love for the first. Oh, man. And then you get a second one. It's like, that's a good feeling because you're like, wow. You know what I mean? And, you get to grow with the character. Yeah. Yes. You yes. say, I know this character, and I'm ready to do it again. Hmm. Yeah. Do more of this or that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's a let's just talk about real quick when when a director's directing or trying to get a character out. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there's been uh, back and forth because I've done it on on stage where directors like, no, Alex, I want you to emote like this, and I'm like, okay, I'm emoting, and he's like, no, 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 and then all of a sudden your brain goes, all right, what do you want from me? You know, <laughs> like so, like when you're going back and forth from a director, um, good or bad, is it how how hard is that getting taken direction? Um, as opposed to like, I know I got it, but he's not listening to me. Yeah, I think you just need to listen well because the director has certain visions on how he wants the movie done. So you have to listen to the instructions, listen to how he wants the character to act, how to emote. And if you just follow along and realize that there's a reason for what he's saying, it works out. For example, I was doing this one movie, Chronicles of the Order, and the director kept telling me to turn my neck all the way and say this line, we'll be in touch. And I would just say, you know, we'll be in touch. Touch. No, you need to turn your neck further. And I'm oh. thinking, how far can I turn my neck? <laughs> but he wanted me to do a whole certain t body movement oh to good, say yeah. the line. And then when the movie came out and it played in the theater, I said, wow, that looks great. No wonder that turn, whoops, oh, you're, you're okay. <laughs> that turn of the head and that the whole body positioning oh. just worked great with the line. Well, so he really knew what well, he was and talking that's, and about. And that's something, really uh, cool. um, well, MMA fighter and actor uh, Kung Lee was actually talking. Uh, he was on our show a few shows ago, and he was talking about that too. Where one guy who was filming a shot, and he's like, "Man, you're cutting off my forehead!" And you know, he's like, "He's like, but Kung, if you're not paying attention, like we're paying attention to your eyes, we're not paying attention to that." And when he saw it later, it just blew him away. Like, "Oh, that's beautiful." way it's shot so even when you and i do this too where i think i know more than thou and it's like no 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 no, just wait till it gets done but i do that with other uh, actors and comedians that i film and then i'm filming something and i'm like no 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 just just listen just trust me just do this and they do it and they go oh that was that was really great right. because sometimes the director will see something of course that no one else sees because he's going to be the one driving the whole editing process and everything exactly they see something so you from have the that, camera you that have you're have not trust aware of. into the director mm -hmm. you know you and do you have to um, especially if it's hard you know um uh if you you know if like you were saying <laughs> like look this way and it's like well you know i like have you ever like uh got in an argument or an act with an actor or anything like that or no no uh like you yelled out on set or anything like that any no i've been fortunate that hasn't <laughs> happened i think that i follow directly that's, that's rare loves judy that's, everybody yeah, loves, loves to work with judy but that's, that's <laughs> she doesn't get any problems but that's rare <laughs> though that, that is very rare because believe me there's um what was that uh what was that guy who played batman uh, he, they caught him on camera yelling and screaming oh, oh no. yeah oh, uh, ben val kilmer was it Val? Oh, yeah. Val was Kilmer. that slamming Sal? Yeah. But yeah, same thing. They, He's a good he, actor, though. A light came off or something, and he just he just went went off on the guy who dropped the light. But but sometimes you just never know what's going on. It's set in people's heads, and they want to get it just right. So on sets, there's a lot of tension to get it right and everything. There so, can be. Yeah, there can be. So I'm, I'm just... Uh, what I want to say is you have to be aware of that. It's, it's like, you know, of people. And you have to trust your director, trust your people. And you have exactly. to understand you don't know what's going on, even in their, their personal lives. Um, so that's another thing just to... Right, right. And an actor who tries to self-direct or direct others is not going to be invited back to set. <laughs> so it's best to just follow directions, know your role well. And do what you're supposed to do. Yes. Well, let's talk about the recent music videos. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, the music video that you were with, Neff the Pharaoh. Oh, yes. yes. Chocolate cake. Yeah, chocolate <laughs> Oh, did you hear about this? I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. It's a really good rap video. Oh, it's on I, my YouTube. You yeah, must look it up. Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> I, oh, I know Neff, right? <laughs> okay, well, Judy's in, Judy's in the music video. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you. She's already lit then. Yeah, <laughs> Let, go and describe to the yeah. character you're portraying. Um, I'm playing this character, Laura Stewart, who is um, emulates Martha Stewart in a way because she's running a cooking show. When they put out the ad 
for on SF casting. They were looking for an actress who had music video experience, could dance, and could uh, play a host, had a good voice, and could play a host of and a And you TV met all show. the criteria yes, <laughs> for all that. Right. So I applied Judy's for it. I was excited. Her. Yeah, yeah. And then it turned out the production company told me, well, we directed another music video called Dollars that you were in. So they said, we know you. We'd love to have you do it. So, yeah, I played, played the TV show host, which was kind of funny because I'm supposed to be teaching the rappers and the other dancers there how to bake a chocolate cake. So there's lots of cake and cupcakes in it. So it's like, like a dance video. It's I like, do some yeah, dancing, but I also have a few parts where I'm talking about making the cake. Ooh, so I got to really see it. I got to see it. Right after, yes. right after. You got to check it out. It, <laughs> I will. I will. It was interesting because you posted up about it, and I, I watched the music video, and I was just cracking up because it, it was like everyone's having fun. It, you know, oh, it, was, yes. it was a cool music video. There was video. a lot going on there was with a lot, the cupcakes. Yeah. And you just see everyone just with some batter mix, and they're just like yeah. just jamming out. And then, you know, there's Judy right there like, yes, it's right over here. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it was very fun, but also you re worked recently with another music video and another artist. Yes, the Egyptian Lover. lover. That's right. I was no really way. excited the, to work with the him. The OG Egyptian Lover? Yes, the OG Egyptian <laughs> wow. Lover. Yes, I was in... That's exactly it. That's the song. And this new song is called International Freak, and I was a dancer in it. We had a wonderful time with it. I had a makeup artist put Egyptian makeup on oh. me and some jewelry to emulate they, the Egyptian they full part. lifestyle. They, they, yeah. yeah, so there was a lot of dancing. We worked on that all day, and it was just the best time. It was really great, and I'm excited to be in it because I always loved his music. So when I found out well, me, yeah. I was cast and that he was the artist, I said, oh, my God, that's that's who it is. It's, I am so excited. Yeah, and yeah. music videos, I think, are always fun to be a yes, part of. I love them. To be Even if you're not behind the set, you're just watching everything. Essentially, for most music videos, you want to have fun. You want to show entertainment. You want to, you know, you can and, have you entice... fun with it. Yes. yes, you're not memorizing lines or being. Well, you are being a character, but at the same time, you're being yourself, having fun. Yes. It's an extension of that character, and you're getting in your dancing, which I always love. Yeah. How many music videos you been in, uh, Truth? I, was I in this? I was in probably. Oh, probably. I was in. I think one of DL's videos, probably. DL, uh, Arson. Arson. I was, in, yeah. I was in one of his. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, one at least. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I feel, well, I just know um, filming music videos are always fun because yes, I, fil I filmed uh, uh, definitely a handful of some local artists and uh, the comedian Leonard the Kid Jackson, and I filmed a few music videos for him, and it's fun. It's really fun when you, when you have a creative person or artist and they say, hey, I want to have a song about this, but I want to, like, Egyptian lover, I want to actually have people dress up in the Egyptian outfits. Mm -hmm. I want to have, you know what I mean? And you have that, it, you can do no wrong. You're going to have fun no matter what. It's going to be a great uh, project. And I encourage people to really put, put your effort into a music video and have fun. Because a lot of music videos that I've seen are like, even if they're rappers or pop stars, you can see how they're like, I love the music I make, but I'm not you know, visually like, oh, I'm trying my best to dance. And it's like, do you have to go all in or it shows? Yes, yes, It you shows. Do. You have to fun. really let loose. I don't know. It's work, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it's, it's, all, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always going to work, even on the days where you don't want to. Um, I remember I was at a music video, and one guy was like, oh, I'm so tired. I don't want to do this. And his friend's like, man, come on. And rise the, the button, hit record. He just lit up and was like, yeah, yeah, and cut. Oh, That's what man. you have to do. That's what you have to do. You can't show it if you're tired or not feeling well that day. Yeah. you got to go Cause all Because they'll, they'll slow down the music video, and that one person in the background are like, <laughs> just, like, oh man, we gotta cut him out now. We gotta yeah. zoom over here and put these people in. Man, why wasn't I in the music video? Man, you look tired. We don't want that in the music video. We want, we want fun energy. Yes, you gotta be vibrant. Yes, and Egyptian Lover is a very vibrant artist. Oh, <laughs> over for yes, many years. Yes. So, and that's one of Sam's uh, favorite artists. Uh, he right as he saw and heard about this news, he was like, "Oh, that's oh my god!" He, his eyes lit. And I, I messed with him at first. I was like, I don't even know who Egyptian Lover is. He's all like, what? And he, he texted me. And he's How could looking, you not know who I know, that is? But I'm just sitting here reading this like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell him later. This is funny. And I was like, yeah, I know who he is. My, one of my dad's favorite artists. And he had a little, all the LPs, you know. And I'm like, who's the guy with the chest hair? Like, that's that son. That is, <laughs> that is Egyptian <laughs> Lover. All right, you're going to learn about him. I'm like, okay, Dad. All right. So, but that that's that's cool because music videos are fun. But yes. if you're not doing music videos, you're not doing movies. Um, talk about some of the voice acting, like that you were talking about that, uh, earlier. I've done a lot of voiceovers as well as commercials. 
I did a voiceover for Fame Pick. I did okay. one for this Break Me Free hypnosis website. So I've okay. done a variety as well as the voice for a movie called Change because it was an Indian movie and they wanted an American Can, version okay, with an English-speaking voice. So I did the English-speaking voice for it. So, cool. so, yeah, I've done a variety of them and for Adobe also. Oh, wow. I enjoy doing them. Adobe, They're yeah. always fun. Well, that's, that's, that sounds very interesting because when, it, when you do voice... So yeah, well, that's a, yeah, that's a variety because <laughs> even some people can act, but it's hard for them to you know voice act because even then, like even if I try, like I'm I'm overthinking it, you know, like oh um maybe I should sound this way or this way, but it's like it, just be natural, be yourself, and your uh, potentially your voice is what you do. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. I can imitate voices as we talked about earlier, but so far I've mostly just done myself, my own voice as a spokeswoman. For different products and different commercials. Okay, that's and how did you get into doing any of those? Did you just just um, you just looked them up and said, "Hey, maybe I can do this," or we went to websites. Actually, I had gone to an audition once, and somebody, it was for an on-camera role, somebody said to me, I also do need a voiceover talent for something, and you have a great voice. I'd be interested in using you for this. So he ended up hiring me to do some voiceovers. And then after that, I found out about different companies that were putting out ads on casting sites looking for voiceover talent. So I would apply to them, and I got hired, and some of them would repeatedly hire me. So pretty soon, I started building up a well, resume. You have well, a very warm, trusty voice. Like, I trust Thank you. you. I trust you. I would listen to you on GPS. Oh, okay. That's very, good. Very, very <laughs> that comforting. That would be an interesting voice. job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's incredible because um, when you do like uh, voiceover work and like, or not even voiceover, but you're just using your voice, um, that's great because you went to that that uh, audition and they said, well, we need you for that opportunity every yes. day. You have to go and you never know. You never know what's going to be there for you. That's right. You could be there auditioning for one role and they really see you in a different role and you end up with something different and even better than what you thought you would get. You just never know. And that's how that was. Well, that's a funny story because that's how I got into uh, theater. Um, one, I, I, I've been in theater, but how I got uh, jobs into loading in theater uh, trucks and stages. One day I was just bored at the college and they were behind schedule building props. And I was like, Oh, here, let me help you guys. And I picked up a hammer and tools and I was helping them. Wow. And then my boss was like, bro, dude, you, you saved us time. And you know, you didn't have to do this. Uh, I'll hire you for some other jobs. And I'm thinking, yeah, whatever. I'm just hammering. Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> you just want time. some more work out of me. And he's like, no, dude, I pay uh, a high amount That's or whatever. Good. And I've been working with him for the uh, last two years. That's just for just, Rockefeller. just, you know, Putting just, you know, just so you, you never know. So I encourage anyone just, you know, hey, maybe someone needs help. But if you're going to go to an audition, if you're looking to get to a job or you get to an area, you have to make go there and just try. And if you don't like it. You, That's right. You never know where it can lead. You don't want to pass up opportunities. It's very important to take them. And in the past, <laughs> I know I have passed up opportunities I didn't take and I regret it. So you really have to take them when they come and not say, well, I have to wait for the time to be right or think about this. No, if it sounds good and it's something profitable, take it. Yes, yes. Well, do us, do, do us a quick favor. Let's hear a sample or from a voice of yours, they say if you're just talking for Adobe or a, or a, not Adobe, but for a company, and say you know just say a line or uh, how would you how would you start it off saying it? Okay, I did a commercial for NBC Universal for their astrology network, so I'll just say something there. People depend on astrology every day of their lives. Every day they need advice. They want to know what they can do with, with their future, what would be best for them in the next week or so or even a year from now. That's when you need to call the Astrology Network. The Astrology Network can advise you on what is best and what are the right decisions to make. Dude, that is so amazing. You, 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 see, you hear this? Professional. I'm telling you, it, it's just so nice. <laughs> it just, it just feels just relaxing. You're just like, ah, oh, I, I think I'm going to call that number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll talk about the astrology. <laughs> the astrology network, those weren't my actual lines. I yes. just came up with but those. On but on the spot, you, you never know. You can listen to that on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> but that's that's incredible just even there. You, you have a great voice for like scientific stuff. It, it feels good. There. I actually played a scientist in a movie, yeah, which involves on-camera work and voiceovers, feels, yeah, a movie called Andrea. Yeah, yeah you have a, like a very, it sounds kind of like an intellectual voice that like people can hear like a futuristic something like in a sci-fi movie right yeah like yeah, you're saying yes. what you're saying like an ai or even yeah, like uh like that. yes yeah. you have a great voice thank you oh yeah thank you. like when i heard that too i was like wow that could even be like AI, a yeah, yeah, that's a, the, that's the word yeah. <laughs> very powerful um <laughs> well you know i and see that's what's so 
and funny in theater and arts and uh, TV shows and everything, you never know where people's talents come from. You know, they and they come from various backgrounds or um, maybe they practice. And some people, they practice. They practice so hard, you never know. You never know. And mm-hmm. and then they show it and you'd be like, oh, my God. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, you just don't see the, the blisters on my hand from all the dance choreography, but I put in work. That's how I got here. This is how I did work, this. Work. Mm-hmm. Yes, work is, yeah, and that's... Do you practice in front of a mirror? Is that was that your no. thing, or that's not your? <laughs> no, I've never how, done that. How do you practice your lines, Judy? Like, or how do you, how do you get ready for a role? And, I or just, how do you practice? When I get the script, I practice it. And if we're talking about memorization, I of course first memorize it before I start putting the feelings and emotions into it because mm-hmm. I want to have it memorized to a T so that I don't have to worry about the lines later on mm-hmm. and then I can add the emotions. So I just practice while I'm doing household chores and the shower everywhere I am when okay, I have a part everywhere. coming up. Keep practicing it till it's memorized then start f- feeling like I can make it flow better with some feelings. How do you add emotion to it then? Because I'm going to say you're, you're getting into an angry, mm-hmm. you have to say in an angry tone but you're not angry. How do you how do you get into that zone? Do you think do you think of something that makes you angry? Or how, how do you do that? Yes. Every person has had something in their life that has made them very angry or very sad or very excited. You just have to find that part of you, come up with those memories, come up with those feelings that you had at that time and recall them and put them into the role. Even if you're not consciously thinking about the certain event that made you angry or upset, you got to remember, I did feel angry and upset about something, and this is what it felt like, and bring it and to you the have surface. And you have to connect it. That's what yes. they, that's one of the things they uh, they taught me in theater too. They What's would it? say you have to find that it's like okay if you have to pull out an emotion you have to connect to something that yes. get, gets so close. You don't want to you don't want to focus on that, but mm-hmm. you want to you want to get just close enough to pull a little bit from that. Right, push your own buttons is what you have yes. to do. Know what will work with you. Really, okay. Well, I don't know anything about acting. I, I, <laughs> I don't know anything about. It. <laughs> I'm just trying to look. But. <laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> 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 well, well, okay, so you said you have to, you know a specific experience. Do you have like a specific one when it comes to let's say happy? You have like a specific happy thing that you want to do that you think about. Different specific, things. Different yeah, things. Yeah, not just okay. one specific okay, thing. So yeah, oh. happy is a very uh, easy, easy emotion way. for me to play, mm. being excited mm. and happy. It's when you're thinking of something sad that it takes more okay. more effort and energy because you've got to really bring yourself into it and, and make yourself naturally cry, not pretend to cry. Can you but cry on command? Come out. Yes, I can. Oh, my God. I don't want to cry today, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not going <laughs> to. That cry, is so impossible. Otherwise, oh, right, so I'll make you guys cry, too. Yeah. <laughs> that is so impossible to cry on command. Man, I, that's, that's a talent. That's a talent. That's a talent. You know, that's so cool. But that's one of the things where you have to practice, um, oh. and you have to get used to. Because um, I, I know voices, I do voices, but mm-hmm. the only voice I actually had to practice to learn was Obama. I really wanted to learn him for some reason. I was like, I really want to learn to do that voice. And then I would watch a lot of him on TV, and then I would learn about his inflections. And I, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, why am I? And I was like, I don't know why I'm learning this, but this is, I love his voice. And did so, you learn it? Yes, I let's did. Let's hear it. Okay, let's see. Uh, give, me, give me a topic, and I'll talk about the topic. Uh, uh, tax cuts. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump is talking about tax cuts. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know what he's doing. But we're going to find a way to make sure the tax cuts uh, go to the Republicans and Democrats uh, accordingly so they can work together. And it's going to pan out <laughs> for America. Uh, and I'm going to have a talk to my wife uh, and talk to my daughter, Malia. And we're going to work this thing out. You know? <laughs> that doesn't sound like him with all the pauses. Yeah, it, yeah he takes a lot of pauses. Stop, fast and stop. Yeah. I, that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to learn it because it's the, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, but you got, but even learning that, sometimes you blend voices. You accidentally met, like I would sometimes do Bill Clinton. Do like, oh uh, yeah, that's right. You know, it's like it's it's really hard. I'm telling you, Ray, you should have your own channel. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's one of those things where I'm learning. I'm still learning. As old as I am, I'm still learning about acting. You know, just like I still, I know, oh, oh, everything. So I'm glad that Judy came on the show and yeah, you know Judy. taught us a lot because I'm going to look back look back at this and be like, oh man, this is incredible that we had an uh, an actress on our show mm-hmm. and who can you know verify a lot of things that I learned through the arts because I, I would have been hard pressed if everything I learned was wrong. I'd be like, oh great, <laughs> now I have nothing to talk about on the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy Judy is here. Thank you. Know, you. To, to ex- this is my first time with an actress on the show. And you know, I gotta ask you this. I I prepped you before. <laughs> he didn't forget. Like, I have to ask you who you have any like. Who is your favorite actor or actress 
someone that has influenced you in your career or someone that you just like? I really like Julia uh, Louis Dreyfus. Dreyfus, oh, wow. okay. Yeah, she was on the Seinfeld show, as we all know, playing Elaine, and she also did another show called Adventures of the Old Christine. I really love her comedy. I think she's got great comedic timing. When I do comedies, I do think of her and do think of how oh. she uh, kept her femininity and her grace in all her roles, but at the same time was just downright funny. And she had such excellent timing with everything. Both roles were a little similar that she played, but she brought out a lot of well, humor. So I really like her acting. Yeah, and she was on Seinfeld. She was yes, yes. Elaine on Seinfeld. Well, that was the number one rated uh, TV show for a long, long oh, period. Yes, it's and an excellent she was a show. big part of that because <laughs> I remember when I watched Seinfeld, she would have great lines. I would laugh and be like, "Oh man!" But being with Seinfeld and all these big names, and she was right there with them. Yeah. So that's 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 definitely someone to look up to. Yeah, and I really like Clint Eastwood and Robert De Niro. I think they're <laughs> excellent day. actors. My I mean, day, punk. Yeah, I mean, well, there were there was another movie Clint Eastwood did though that was really wonderful called Grand Torino. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, no, that, no, no, that yeah. really yeah. showed Here, he, him in I a know, different I, kind of role, an angry man who had prejudiced feelings towards his neighbors, and then he learns that they're more family to him than his own family, and becomes a part of their family and flips. helps. Yeah, helps in, the kids who are dealing with gangsters. It was a me, really good movie. Correct me if I'm wrong, he was the, the director or I think producer of uh, Letters, to I G Letters to Iwo Jima, um, Clint Eastwood. But yeah, he also directs. That's another phenomenal mm -hmm. thing that he does. Um, but yes, Grand Torino, I saw that movie, it was a great movie, Get Off of My Lawn. You know, he yes. had that, you know, gruff voice, but yes. the whole dynamic of him flipping on his, his morals and the I ideals that he thought was, that was a great movie. Yes, yes, it was. It was a very yes. touching story, very sad, too. And master of the cowboy western action movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you have a, do you, I mean, okay, so you mentioned your favorite actors. Do you have a favorite director? Or do you have like a like a directing style that you prefer? I really like Steven Spielberg, Spielberg. and Stephen King. I think their oh. movies are excellent. Which ones? Do you have a favorite movie? Oh, of I, I would say all <laughs> of them. I couldn't say a favorite Which one, one popped in your head first? It doesn't have to be your favorite. Which one popped in your head first? Um, I can't think of the title at the moment, really? but I just, okay. I, I love seeing all of them. Whenever Spielberg. I see a great movie and I look and see who the director they're is, all I great. see their names, Truth? I they're say, all great. well, of course. Yeah, I say, of course, that it was great. Look <laughs> at who directed it. Yes. Yeah, their movies are, uh, they're mostly horror movies, but mm -hmm. also like we discussed earlier, psychological thrillers. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they're always really good. Um, do you, I mean, would, would that, how would you feel if you were in a Spielberg movie? Would that be oh, like? Would I that would be, be the, very your excited. goal? Is that a goal? In that your that is. Too? That would be a very exciting time to be in one of their movies. Yeah, I would just love it. And they're they're still pumping the films out. Uh, they yeah. are. They're They've been doing pumping. it yeah. for years. They, they they don't. And that's another that's another uh, facet of the hustler. You're, like you know what I mean? To aspire to someone else doing the same thing. Because at that age, someone could have been like, ah, oh, they you know. Like, they can stop making movies. They don't need to. They can right. teach. They're, they're, they're already like, well off. Uh, no, I already just made a movie this year, and I have two more next year. You know? <laughs> uh, that's the way it goes. That's great. Okay. So, um, Judy, I got to ask, well, since we have Rage Rockefeller, who's going to make a YouTube channel <laughs> sometime this year, and there's, there's a lot of, you know, upcoming actors and actresses that are in the game, and they're still kind of lost, don't know how to get started. So... What maybe advice do you have to give to somebody that's upcoming or maybe someone that's kind of losing their passion about it or just, you know, any advice maybe to an upcoming actor or actress? Uh -huh. What would you have to say to that? Well, if you're losing your passion for it and it's not what you desire anymore, you probably would be better off finding another career where you're doing something you do feel passionate about. Or like, because like, like someone's really like constantly is rejected. And mm -hmm. like they're, they're so, well, yeah. you have to look at yourself in those circumstances and say, if you're not getting cast, maybe you need some more acting training. If you still want to pursue it, take some good acting classes, start doing theater. Theater is a good training ground, too. The acting in theater is different from the theater and film, but it teaches you to come out of your shell, to develop characters, and also to think on the fly. Because on stage, if you're doing a performance and you forget a line or something goes wrong, there's no retakes as there is in film. You have to just just act on the fly. You have to come up with <laughs> lines of your own on the spur of the yeah, moment. Yeah, uh, that just yeah. real quick. When, when you're on stage like that, and they tell you like, "Oh, uh, you flubbed the line," but no one knows unless yeah. you unless you like. You it have seems to cover yeah, it. you yes. have to cover it. And other people, other other workers will be like, "Oh, he messed up a line. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fix this," and then they have to come in and help. So it's a little bit of teamwork in there. Yeah. 
Exactly, exactly. You have to help each other out when you're on stage. If someone forgets a line and maybe bring up the word that you know they forgot to say, bring it up <laughs> in a different context so it'll jog their memory and they'll remember it. Have you gone to any uh, plays? The theater. Uh, I saw my niece's play. She was uh, <laughs> she was in the Nutcracker. She was one of the mice. Oh, <laughs> oh <the> mice? <laughs> she was one of the mice that fought against the, those soldiers. So that's the latest play I saw. Okay. Just this time. <laughs> you have. Oh. I would advise you to go see oh, some yeah. see some uh, plays, but also see some of the, the ones at like the bigger theaters because uh, if you haven't been there in a while, it is an eye opener because you get to, a chance to see live performances and then. Sometimes you don't think about it, but when you actually see something live, and then after the play, you can interact with the, the, the actors and actresses and, you know, kind of let them know, oh, this is what I liked and things like that. It's a, it's a beautiful moment for just being a, a, a fan, but it's also great to see those people live and go, and then a lot of those people, they go on to be, do bigger things, and you go, oh, man, look at that. I remember seeing that person when they're the little mouse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My niece. Yeah, see? You never know. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. You know, so it's a new year, new yes. me, me, opportunities galore this year. So, you know, definitely if there's some time to that, I'll definitely take your recommendation, Rage Rockefeller. But also, we need to check out a lot of more, a lot more of Jordy Serta's yeah, works and yeah. videos and content. And I want to see more of the films and the upcoming yeah. films. What, what are your upcoming projects, Judy? Like, what's what's the hype this year? Well, there's Taking Liberty, Andrea, Satan Cemetery, and this other movie has a very long name, The Super Fun, The, the Super Safe and Something oh Fun, fun re Virtual Reality Show Movie. <laughs> very a long, long title. Name. A, I have it on YouTube with the correct well, name. Where can we see? Where can we see some of your work? Because I definitely, well, for sure, I'm gonna go on YouTube and yes. watch the YouTube, the the Nef the Feral video, but. Where can we see some of your work? Where, like, if we want to get more to see your your chops, your acting chops, where can we see it? Where can we see well, it? besides YouTube, I always post on Facebook when they're going to play in a theater or when they're okay. going to play in a film festival. I've had a lot of movies play at uh, Cine Arts at Santana Row in San Jose, oh, okay. which I've been excited about, as well as in film festivals in New York and Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, different areas. So I always post about it when something's going to play awesome. or if when I do a TV show, when the TV show is going to air, I post that. And awesome. when I get copies of my own, that's when I put them on YouTube. YouTube, so you can also watch them there as well as on my Google Real website. MVP. <laughs> yeah, and when you see, when you uh, have Judy Serta and you're following her, you will see every every day something post because that's like I like the two weeks before I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna have Judy on the show. Great! I've already seen so much work that she's been a part of TV shows, like commercials, and it's, it's here's a new one. Yeah, no, exactly, <laughs> and that's that's great because that just makes other people when they see that that should make them focus. I need to be on that level too. Mm -hmm. But essentially, if you're already doing that good, you don't have to worry about it because oh. some days you'll be like. Uh, feel like this or I don't want to you know post this or I'm just but there's people that's like I'm going to do it I'm going to make sure I do it I only have this much time I want to do it and then that's what people remember they're going to remember even if okay this person may not be the actor I want but Jesus look at the the hard work the dedication and the, they were standing in the rain for the audition and like oh my god they're there every day and they're hustling they're doing what they can they're like I want to pick that person way before the the I know what I'm doing I'm the director but no you're the actor like, no, right. no, 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 exactly. I'm the money, I'm everything. And it's like, no, they'd rather pick the hard me, worker me, first. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the, the voice? Me, me, me. <laughs> and Judy, uh, what's it called? Um, how do you feel about the, the movie industry today? Um, you know, there's a, there's, it, it's different from, the, you know, the 90s, the 80s, mm -hmm. even the 2000s. It, it's changes. So how do you feel about the landscape today? And the, the, just the quality of movies, a lot of CGI a lot of, you know, just a lot of, it's just, it's different. Like, uh, what's, I want to know what's your opinion about that. Mm -hmm. Well, for a while, I was seeing a lot of movies that were not that great, and I was thinking to myself, the major motion picture movies are just not as good as the independent films yeah. because they are so predictable. And you see one story and you say, I've seen that story 10 times before in other movies. But lately, I think there's really been quite a few good ones out there. Yeah, like The Shape of Water was oh, really excellent. Uh, yeah, Benicio Del Toro. I want to see Shape that movie. of Water. Yeah. Yes. Well, water has a shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a sci-fi type. <laughs>
Yeah, well, I have seen some recently where I've said, wow, those are really good. I think putting unique ideas into a movie is important, and it looks like some directors and producers are realizing that, that it's time to make it about something different than the same old typical love mm. story that you've seen ten times over. So you like so the independent right now? That's that's where the quality. Would you say a that? lot of them, yes. Okay. Yes, there are lots of good independent movies out there winning awards. So the Cannes, um, the Cannes Festival is like. Yes, it's, okay. they're getting in festivals. They're in select movie theaters. I've had quite a few movies in mm. selected movie theaters, which is exciting. So I really do think the independent movies are doing really that's good because at. there's unique directors out there and they're really coming up with original stories. Mm. Yeah. When uh, South by Southwest comes, that's all I want to talk about is independent <laughs> movies. They're talking about, you know, but when it comes to town, every year there's independent films and a lot of films you don't get a chance to really see. But when mm -hmm. they actually hit those uh, theaters and then they actually hit locally and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, this is only showing whatever, and you get a chance to see that. But you also get a chance to put money into local artists and you kind of go, wow, this, yes. you know, this is great. It feels great to see that person mm -hmm. and then even see that person grow more and more. Mm -hmm. So I think independent is very important. Because it we've all, like there's many people, even Sam knows the many uh, many actors and uh, musicians and people that actually help and be a, and they build that world up because it takes a team. And then when you have a good director, when you have a positive team that's acting with you, and then uh, everything's flowing well, it's a beautiful project. Instead mm -hmm. of being on a, a set where everything's hectic and everything has to be this way, and it's so I believe independent it should be a more vibrant. Uh, it is. I think that the audiences NBC. for them are increasing. Yeah, that's yeah. I think. Well, I think that's where the power and method. Uh, a lot of method actors are going. Um, don't get me wrong. Like the recent movie that you saw in theaters. Ah, I forget the name of that movie. The one with the dress of the guy who's a, a scene. Yes, I think yes. it was called Phantom Love. Phantom, Phantom something. Yeah. The movies. Yeah. Little, well, movies <laughs> well, the like that. The dressmaker <laughs> and the house he it, ran it, with it, dresses. From the trailer, it showed a lot of that acting. It's not necessarily about like a action movie or whatever. Right. It, it, it looked like he was just build, building uh, building up to a beautiful story, mm -hmm. which is really rare for films uh, nowadays. It's hard right. to build a love story. It was a very old fashioned story, which is what I liked about it. It had it was a real old fashioned type of script. Yeah. Well, halfway through the. Halfway through, they didn't go, uh, you know, and now she's a transformer, you know, and now the the dress is, you know, because that's what a lot of movies now we're doing basically is we're going to sit there and go this is a great movie but we you know they transformed or they they edited a different special effect but no it's good to see a nice down to earth all you know non-special effect movie it's really it's you know some people it's hard to, to go to the theater to see that to be honest yeah. because you're always waiting to see what's the biggest flashiest thing can i ask one more question for judy yeah. I, I, two, yeah. two minutes we got okay. two minutes all right okay <laughs> Me, me and my girl, we, we love watching scary movies, and I know that's your genre. Yeah. Give us some recommendations right now. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, boy. I haven't seen one, I guess, in about a month. Yeah, but, just give um, us some recommendations. We saw uh, The Babadook. We've seen It Follows. Probably like those two are like ones that we've seen. I don't know if you've seen those. Yeah, those I, like, I don't know what's out right indie, now yeah. at okay. the moment. Yeah. But definitely see Satan Cemetery when that comes out. Okay. That's the one I'm in. But yeah, you you would just have to check because I don't think I've seen a horror movie in about a month. Well, you have a, any rec or you have any recommendation that you have like one that like people like that I don't know like a recommendation that you like. I couldn't really think of one at the moment. Oh, yeah, I've okay. seen so many. Of oh, them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't think of the titles at the moment, but I about a month or so ago, I know there were a few out around. Right. Halloween time. Halloween, yeah, a lot of them came out around Halloween. Oh. There you go. Memories okay. of Murder. <laughs> That's a Korean uh, horror movie. Go oh, see that one. Oh, my oh really? <laughs> we saw Train, Train to Busan. We saw that one. Oh, how was that? It was good. That was good? You should watch it. Oh, I guess we got to check it out. <laughs> Korean. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got worldly, you know, yeah. you got you to gotta see it. You got to see uh, the world's uh, cinemas, like the, the movies that are they play all over. But it's good that now Netflix and a lot of other companies are doing that. But I will say this. Thank you, Judy, for having us on the show. Thank you for Thank having you, me. The real MVP. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> well, real we're going to do our shouts and plugs real quick. Let's start off with our co-host, <laughs> Truth. Uh, all right. I just want to do just one. I just want to give a shout out to my girl, <laughs> Marion. Uh, she's always been there for me. And she got me a switch for Christmas. Woo! That's true love right there. <laughs> <laughs> she got me Mario Kart. So that, that's that. So I just want to give a shout out to Marion. Drive safe back to Gilroy, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for having me, guys. They slam Rockefeller and 
Judy over here. Just great show, great show. Thank you. Right. Judy Serta, will you please tell us her shout some plugs? Uh, shout out to my mother, my husband, Jesse, and my cat, Jenny. I love you all. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> cat. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's. I just want to give a uh, shout some plugs to uh, the man behind the the camera, uh, DJ Slam and Sam, um, cool. and the, the all TVPN family. Uh, basically, everyone watching, tuning in, that's checking out the show today. Uh, thank you. Uh, stay dry because it's going to start getting wet soon. So uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. you got you got to put on a jacket. You don't oh, want to get you sick. Put on the Egyptian yeah. lover. There you go. I like it. With <laughs> a piece. Peace, yes. love, and everything else. <laughs> <laughs>